Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking another look at the old net. Now this is a project that we first took a look at back in 2019 on this channel. And what this is, just to sum it up for you briefly if you've never heard of it, this is a project that allows you to view old archived snapshots of web pages dating all the way back to 1996. Now it does this through the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine, the massive archive of websites that it has collected over the years. But the one thing about the Wayback Machine is you cannot access it on an old computer with an old web browser because the web page is more modern, it's more advanced, and these old browsers cannot display it properly. But that's where the old net comes in because this allows you to view that massive library of archived web pages from an old web browser on an old computer because this page right here can be displayed in an old web browser without any issues, which is really, really awesome. Now, ever since that video uh, was published, apparently a lot of you guys were going over to the website that the developer of the old net actually got in contact with me a little while ago and said that there are some updates that he's done to the website that he thought would be cool for me to showcase in a video. And we're going to be taking a look at a couple of those things today. And we're going to start off with one of the coolest things, in my opinion, and that is the HTTP browser proxy. You can access this by clicking on the first link under the Try Our App section of the page here, and it will take you to this instructions page. Now, what this allows you to do is essentially bypass having to go to the oldnet.com and typing in the website you want to go to in this box here, select 1996 and hit go. Because when you have the proxy set up, you can just go to your web browser's address bar, type in whatever address that you want and press enter, and it will pull a snapshot of that web page from 1996. And it does this simply through a modification of your browser's proxy settings, which is very easy to do, though it is going to slightly differ depending on the web browser that you're using. I'm here in Internet Explorer 6, and I'll walk you through briefly how to do it. So go up to tools here, go to internet options, then click on the connections tab here, and then go down to LAN settings right here. Then you want to check use a proxy server for your LAN. For the address, type in theoldnet.com. And for the port, you want to put 1996. Very appropriate. Then we have to click on the advanced button here and we have to add an exception. And that exception is going to be web.archive.org. Now we have to do this so that the images and everything that the Internet Archive has archived with the Wayback Machine can be displayed properly. If you don't add this, which you don't have to add this, but it's recommended if you want to be able to see images and things like that that have been archived. So we're gonna click on OK, OK once again, and OK once more. And now all I have to do is type in say Microsoft.com and hit enter and it will take me to a snapshot of Microsoft.com from 1996. So we'll let it load here. So this is just incredibly cool. And I think this would be really useful and really cool to have set up on maybe an old 90s computer that you have set up to kind of recreate the 90s gaming experience. Maybe you use it as a 90s gaming rig. Well, it would be cool to have this set up because then you could go to your web browser and literally browse the web as it was in 1996. You just type in whatever address you want into the address bar and go. So the image on the old Nets proxy setup page had Nintendo.com in there. So let's go to Nintendo.com. And here it is right here. This site is constructed for use with a browser that supports frames and JavaScript such as Netscape Navigator 2.0 or above or Microsoft Internet Explorer 3.0. You can see the copyright date is once again 1996 and it's just really, really awesome. Uh, let's check out, why don't we go to Apple.com. So let's go to Apple.com in 1996. Now you can see right here, it's actually downloading images from web.archive.org. And obviously if I didn't have that exception added in there, it would not be able to download those images. Now you might wonder, well, what happens if I try to go to the oldnet.com with this proxy enabled? Well, you go to a slightly different page. We'll go to the oldnet.com here and it will bring you to a more minimalist page. This is essentially a search engine that the developer has set up here. And this allows you to search for web pages as well as archived pages from GeoCities, AOL, and a couple of other services here like AngelFire. So GeoCities uh, was a way, if you've never heard of this, it was a way for you to kind of have your own personal homepage, your personal web page. Uh, it was very popular back in the mid 90s to late 90s. So you can search through an archive, a massive archive of GeoCities pages that the old net has for us. So let's say I want to search up Microsoft. So I'll press find 
and it will search not only web pages. So you can see this is going to have a list of all sorts of web pages that have something to do with Microsoft. So you've obviously got Microsoft.com, MSN.com, Research.Microsoft.com. But if you go down here, you can see it was unable to pull any results from these services here. Uh, now, the default search term was Star Trek. Let's try Star Wars. So we'll do Star Wars, hit enter. And we'll see what the old net comes up uh, with us. We'll say yes to autocomplete. That's fine. So here you go. The Star Wars home site, a new hope for the internet. So this will take us to an archived GeoCities page that uh, was set up by some Star Wars fan, I guess. And here it is. And you can see that just by looking at the address bar, it looks like you're just browsing GeoCities, which obviously GeoCities doesn't exist anymore. So it literally just, I mean, it's just really cool. It's just a really, really nice touch to add to the 90s web browsing experience that you can still experience today through the old net. May the force be with you. And yes, you've got a, a link right down here to GeoCities.com if you wanted to make your own free homepage. We can even go to GeoCities.com, go to the main page. And, uh, and check that out as well. So we'll just do that here. Check it out. This is geocities.com from sometime in 1996. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever seen uh, with old 90s web browsing, anything relating to old web browsing, because I just think this is, like I said, an incredibly clever use of the web browser proxy. So the second thing we're going to cover today ties in a bit with the first change, though this was introduced back in the fall of 2020. So this is uh, not as recent as the web browser proxy, but that's the Wikipedia proxy right here. Typically in an old browser like IE6, when you try to go to wikipedia.org, so we'll go to wikipedia.org here, it's typically not going to work. We can even try to go to en.wikipedia.org. It's not going to be able to load that page either. This is because Wikipedia, even though you might think of it as a basic page with just text and images, it's still a very advanced modern web page, and these old browsers are not capable of displaying it. So the Wikipedia proxy from the old net allows you to browse modern Wikipedia articles from an old web browser. These are not archived versions of Wikipedia pages from like 2006 or something like that. These are current articles. So if I do a search for 2021 here, which is obviously the current year, and I click on the article right here, you will see that right here it says 2021 is the current year. Now, obviously the page is not going to display properly. You can't really expect it to because the old net, uh, by going through this proxy, disables a lot of the scripts by this scripts equals false part of the address here. So it's going to mostly be text and hyperlinks, but this is just a nice touch. It's really cool to be able to access Wikipedia articles from an old web browser. Now, the last thing we're gonna cover today is not something that you can see on the main old net homepage because it takes the form of an iOS and Android application. Yeah, this is something really, really cool, and it's really awesome that the developer not only took the time to make this, but also paid the money to do so as well. I'm not sure how things are on the Android side of things, but I know that for uh, you to publish an app on iOS in the App Store, it costs $99 a year for a developer account. Now, I believe the old net is supported entirely by donations. I don't think there are any ads. There might be, but I've not seen any. And I don't think he could do ads even if he wanted to, because they probably won't display properly on an old browser, which is obviously where most of the traffic is coming from. From my understanding, it's supported entirely by donations. He currently pulls in about $8 a month from his six patrons over here on his Patreon page. And that's obviously not enough to pay for everything for all the operating expenses and on top of the developer account he obviously has to pay for the hosting and for the domain so there are additional expenses that are certainly going to be more than eight dollars a month so uh, if you guys you know get anything out of this and you would like to support uh, the old net and keep it online for years to come i'll have his uh, patreon page down below but let's take a look at the application here. So we're gonna to go to the home page here. This is running in uh, BlueStacks, which is, I just did this through BlueStacks so we could do it on my computer here. So we'll run uh, the old net. Now what's really cool about this, what's really unique if you can't already tell, is the application takes the form of an old Netscape web browser. It's kind of like a Netscape simulator, which is kind of like what they've got on, or what the developer has on the home page here. Uh, it's essentially the same thing here. So I can go up here and type in Microsoft.com, for example, if I can spell that right, Microsoft.com, and press enter, and it will take me to a 1996 version of Microsoft.com. Here it is right here. In addition to this, you can also change the year specifically from this uh, drop-down menu over here. So let's say I want to go to 2005, 
and let's go to uh, let's go to youtube.com we'll go to youtube.com from 2005 and check this out here is a snapshot of youtube.com back from 2005 man Anyone miss this YouTube? This is just, gosh, this is so interesting to take a look at today. Now, in addition to being able to do this, you can also click on the find button up here, and this will take you to that search engine page that we saw before. This is just, a, I think, a bit of an older version of it. But I can go in here and type in, you know, just do Windows 95, do a search for that, and it will pull up all sorts of web pages having something to do with Windows 95. You can also click on print here, and this will allow you to actually print the web page out. These buttons up here do what they say. Back will take you back. Home will take you to the home page, which in this case is geocities.com. Uh, and then you've got obviously uh, reload and stop as well. So if I were, uh, say, uh, let's go back to youtube.com here from uh, 2005. And when the page loads here, I can click on reload to reload the web page. Very, very simple, just like you can do in a regular web browser. Now you've also got a menu bar up here. You can click on file and click on view original, and this will pull up, I believe this is an embedded web browser. You can also click on open externally, and it will open up that URL in whatever your default browser is on your phone or your tablet. So here it's opened up in Chrome here. So we'll just close out of that and go back to the old net. And I can also click on print, and that just does the same thing as clicking on the print button uh, up here. Bookmarks, you can save bookmarks if you want to. So if I want to add a bookmark uh, to this page, there it is right here. So you can get easy access to it. And uh, I can also click on help here. And this will bring up a help page. This is not actually all contained. I mean, this is really just a button here. This is not like a drop down menu. This just tells you a little bit about the old nets and this application specifically, what it does, and the name of the person behind it. So there you have it, guys. That is a brief look at some of the awesome additions that the developer of the old net has added to theoldnet.com. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.